Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show. It is a Tuesday morning. Thank you very much for joining us at the start of a brand new day. Now, you'll all remember that on Sunday night, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced a national state of disaster in light of the coronavirus outbreak. And the number of cases in South Africa has now grown to over 60, and the president has imposed some very strict restrictions on citizens of the country. And to give us an update on the coronavirus and what we need to be doing to protect ourselves, we welcome infectious diseases specialist Dr. Emil Reed and family practitioner Dr. Leila Bikou. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. Morning, guys. Morning, guys. Busy, busy times, Emil. Mm -hmm. busy, busy, busy times busy, indeed. Busy. <laughs> Very busy. Um, Doc, maybe I can, I can start with asking you a confirmation of the number of people that have been infected and how is that number growing? Are we starting to see a South African curve that we can track yet? Yes. I think around about 62 people are infected at this moment in time and that's what we, we, we know of and those people that were, were tested. We expect that to, to rise dramatically within the next day or two and weeks. And, and what, especially while tracing of those people that were in contact with the cases um, get tested. Mm. So we expect it to rise. Yeah. And, um, and it's important because we knew it was coming to our shores and we've been talking about it for months and now it's finally here. So prevention is not an option at this moment in time, but containment is what we need to focus on yeah. um, right now. I read quite an interesting t a statistic on social media that for every one person that gets tested and tests positive, there is a potential of 10 other people that actually should be tested, but that perhaps maybe yeah. Yeah. don't know it. So yeah. that's something to contemplate. Let's talk about the symptoms and the complications yeah. that the coronavirus uh, can cause. Some people have likened it to the common flu. So let's talk also yeah. about how different it is. Well, uh, I, 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 th I think it's, it's, it's completely different. Yeah. Um, uh, because, number one, you can have an array of different symptoms, mild flu-like symptoms, to complete respiratory distress and respiratory failure. Mm. And, and whereas the common flu usually infect the young ones, um, the coronavirus complicates, especially the elderly, um, above the age of 60, 65, and in particularly those people with already uh, existing lung disease, um, like post-TB bronchiectasis, like interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, and also people living with um, diabetes mellitus of which South Africa has extremely high numbers. I was going to say, with mm. post-TB, I mean, these are all things that are, are commonly spoken about in, exactly. in South Africa. How long does exactly. it take for the, the symptoms to start to exhibit? What, how long is the incubation period and when are you likely to see symptoms? No, normally, normally we find that after an exposure, it takes between 2 and 12 days for people to develop symptoms. And, and the problem is that, that these symptoms are usually so mild that people don't bother getting tested. Hmm. And, and, and that's the problem. Um, and, and only if they, they really become ill, they, they get tested. Yeah. So, so the big thing is for, for us to, to, to state that if you have been exposed and if you have been to a high risk country in the last two weeks or you have returned from one um, and you develop even mild flu-like symptoms, please get tested. Because mm. if we don't test, we're not going to be able to trace and we're not going to be able to contain this uh, disease. Yeah. Dr. Lele, if I could ask for your input in this. Um, over the weekend, speaking to a few friends, I heard someone saying that um, young children are immune to the coronavirus. Let's quickly just bust that myth. <laughs> So young children are not immune um, to the virus. There have just been lower case incidences of children um, contracting it, um, and also children seem to be having the milder forms of it. They are not, however, immune, so they can still um, get the virus firstly as well as spread. Yeah. And that's why schools are closing. Another question I have, having a look at that graphic that we showed earlier on um, regarding the symptoms, um, 
w when do you kind of go, okay, this symptom that, that I'm experiencing is as a result of a potential exposure to the virus and therefore I need to get tested or seek medical attention, or there might be something in the immediate environment that I'm in that is causing that. Like for instance, while I was talking to you early on, there seemed to be something in, in the air and I, and I coughed, yeah. but it was a singular <laughs> cough and I don't want to be, you know, alarming yeah, people when, around when, me. And when people does like the make, psychosomatic element yeah, <laughs> and people like yeah. making, you know, it, it, like making light of the situation uh, whenever somebody sneezes or coughs, oh, hey, corona, kind we, of thing. We almost have to. So yeah, when, when do you France. take it seriously, Dr. Bikul? Let me start off with you first and we'll go to Dr. Reed. All right, so, yes, you're going to have like your usual coughs and sneezes, like if you smell something or like a plant that's going to make your nose a little itchy. Those are things that, that can happen. But I think, firstly, how do you feel? Do you feel ill? as a subject of feeling of, are you feeling ill? Are you presenting other symptoms? And then obviously if the symptoms um, persist, then going to speak, um, calling your GP up, um, you know, calling your nurse clinic and then asking them for advice. Um, just very quickly before we're gonna continue this discussion, what is the first step once we have identified flu-like symptoms that we feel, okay, we need to get tested, who do we speak to? So there are a number of um, ways. So you can either call your GP, your local GP and ask them for advice. Um, you could um, call your nearest emergency centre. There is a Western Cape um, hotline that you can call. There's a WhatsApp uh, line that you can also message on for the Western Cape government. There's the NICD hotline. So there are a number of um, telephonic portals available for you to um, you know, ask for advice. I, I think the important thing is people should not go to the emergency rooms or go to the offices of the doctor, especially because they can infect other individuals. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the other thing, I've been on call now for the last week and, uh, at hospital and it was absolutely chaotic because people forget that we are heading towards winter, we have flu being around, that's we have allergies around, and we also have other diseases in the Western Cape, like tuberculosis, that, that are around. And, and yet people are worried about COVID-19 only, mm. and the rest of the history gets neglected. Okay, well, we're going to take a uh, brief pause on this conversation, but we do encourage you to connect with us on social media, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. Uh, throw your questions at us uh, in the comments post, and we'll refer them to the doctors in our next segment. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Thank you so much, Kutle. We are going to continue our very important discussion around the coronavirus. Um, Dr. Emil Reed and family practitioner Dr. Leila Biku here to answer your questions. And thank you so much. You have connected with us on social media. What are the people asking? Absolutely. Some of the comments we've gotten through uh, from Marceline here saying, as a teacher in a private school, I'll be stressing daily about the children who need extra support as they continue to work at home. Our holiday only starts in three weeks. Of course, we know that from this Wednesday, uh, schools will be shutting down. But of course, she expressing her concern about her children uh, that she teaches who will be needing that extra support. Then Vusi author saying, good morning, my best team. To be honest with you, the coronavirus has affected uh, my life in a lot of ways because I can't continue my motivational tour and promoting both of my books in various provinces. That has been a pretty immediate impact, uh, especially for a lot of freelance workers uh, all across the board, not just in the entertainment industry, cancellation and postponements of engagements that have come around. Juanita saying, I still have to work uh, while all is closing down, but glad that you guys are still here don't care yeah. what you guys do in the morning <laughs> just please don't go unless you have to <laughs> well we'll try our very best to to keep on bringing forth a feel good on your feel good breakfast show thank you very much for those comments Juanita. Uh, well luckily we have the advantage of being able to bring the experts a little yeah, bit closer yeah. to us to ask very important questions and we we are most importantly focused on spreading the right kind of information yes I think all of us have some pretty obvious questions how exactly and maybe this is something that has been answered in the media but how is the, the virus spread. You can start thinking about that. We're going to be joining this conversation after a very quick break. Keep posting those comments and those questions about coronavirus. We'll try to answer as many as we can. It's my feel-good breakfast show.
Welcome back to the Tuesday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We continue our conversation regarding the coronavirus slash COVID-19, uh, the steps that are being taken in South Africa. And of course, we try to inform you as best as we, we can with verified information about what you can do. And that's why we bring in the experts. We've got Dr. Emil Reed, infectious diseases specialist, as well as family practitioner, Dr. Leila Biku, joining us in conversation again. Um, and Emil, we appreciate the fact that you are here because you are really busy at mm. the moment. Mm. I know that this affects you in a very direct way. Um, I asked you before the break if we could delve a little deeper into how the virus is actually spread and some of the major risk factors. I think the important thing is people think that this virus is spread in the air. And there's a huge difference between droplet spread, being aerosolized and being airborne. You know, and, and, and if you have droplet spread, as is the case with COVID-19, it means that if I, for instance, talk or cough or any droplets from my mouth or nose sort of goes out of my mouth, it actually stabilizes after about a meter and then sort of goes down, which means if we keep distance from one another, I cannot infect you. Mm. The, 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 uh, so people doesn't have to wear a mask in order to protect them or actually to protect them from spreading it because it's, it's close by. Mm -hmm. If you have people working in a hospital, physiotherapists, nurses working on a patient that is isolated in a room, usually we give them nebulizations, which mean they will cough and then it becomes uh, sort of aerosolized. And in those cases, it can spread slightly further, hence the reason for healthcare providers to wear masks. Mm -hmm. So masks should not be worn outside people walking, walking around, the, around street, the street. And, and then airborne is something completely different mm. because airborne means I cough and the wind will blow it and it will spread all over the show, yeah. which is not the case uh, for COVID-1. So we not. know it is droplet spread which means that distancing ourselves from one another can actually prevent it from being transmitted. Yeah. So those people on the flight sitting next to you, those are the people that's, that That's close infect. proximity, of course. Yeah. So we've had uh, reports of deaths and uh, the infection. So let's talk about the death and infection ratio. And the big question perhaps from uh, some people is, why are some people dying? Why are some people Getting recovering? mild symptoms. Yeah, yeah. mild symptoms. And some, some of them completely um, recovering. Let's talk yeah. about that and also focus on the elderly as a risk uh, so group. So there you have to look at what your risk factors are. Yeah. So if you're just a generally healthy person, younger person, you are most likely just going to get milder symptoms. Um, so the, the people that are developing more severe types of the disease are your elderly patients, so patients over the age of 65, patients that have um, any cardiovascular complications or you know, heart complications, um, respiratory complications, be it asthma, um, any acute lung pathologies, cancers in the lungs, cancers actually anywhere in the body mm -hmm. um, decreases your immune system. So it's, those are the patients that are more at risk, the patients who have a decreased immune system. Mm -hmm. Um, the death ratio that you're asking me about, um, at the moment, the ratio is about 2% um, of people that are infected. So it's quite a low ratio as compared to um, those, the global amount of people that are being infected. Mm -hmm. But it does affect the elderly more than the young. If I've contracted it, um, because a large number, you know, well over you know, hundreds of thousands now we're moving mm -hmm. into that yes, space, yes. Can I contract it again? Do I build up an immunity to it? Are we starting to, will we see a natural you know, immunity start yeah. to develop within populations that have had it? We, we, we are actually looking at it. And, and I've been speaking to people about it and I've been looking at what the WHO is currently doing. And they, they're doing the research to see whether people develop antibodies against it, whether people develop a natural resistance against it. And, and at this moment in time, we don't know mm -hmm. because um, uh, the cases have been around for the last three months. And at this point in time, the research has not been conducted or completed <laughs> where they can actually tell us um, whether we develop antibodies or not, or whether the virus is mutating. We call it shifting and drifting. Um, hence the reason for flu just to come back annually because the virus changes all the time. Mm -hmm. We actually don't have that information at this point in time.
But all the information that we do have, of course, points us to better hygiene practices, washing our hands, coughing in your elbow, and of course, social distancing as well. When we come back uh, with the doctors, I'd like to ask a question about whether improving your own immune system uh, might actually prevent you from contracting the virus in the first place. I'm, I'm trying to find myself in a space where the terminology that I use when I'm speaking to people about this is absolutely correct. And of course, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, link up with us on our social media pages. Expresso Morning Show SA BC3 is where we are on Facebook. Please throw those questions at us. That's why we bring in the experts for your convenience and to have your questions answered. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show. Yes, we are all well and feeling great <laughs> after those health shots. That was a big one. I, 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 morning, I, wasn't, I wasn't quite ready Wake for it. I didn't realize how potent Nicole had made it. Uh, but listen, do link up with us on our social media platforms. We're talking coronavirus. We we're talking COVID-19. And of course, we welcome all of your questions. We've got Dr. Emil Reed and Dr. Leila Biku joining us to answer all of your questions on social media. Uh, Express and Morning Show, SABC3. So let's take a look at those comments that have come through. Uh, the first from Romika, who says, uh, when you are in quarantine at home, how do you treat the situation? What medication is required? Great question, Romika. Thank you very much. A lot for of us Who'd like to take that, that doctors? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Reed passing it on. <laughs> Dr. Biku. So, by quarantine, um, does this person mean they have COVID and they've been quarantined for that reason? And then I think medication would be need to be guided by your healthcare provider. If somebody is just what we call in self-isolation um, or social distancing at home, um, then just things like your immune boosters, keeping healthy with your multivitamins. Um, no real, I mean, there's no medication that you can really take to prevent um, yourself from getting yeah. COVID-19. So I think we just need to make that distinction between the two. I think it's so important, especially when we're talking about things of this magnitude to get yes. the terminology right. Yeah, well, is. certainly from our perspective, because we, we're connecting to so many people yeah, in absolutely. that space. Yeah. Do you just wait it out? <laughs> Do you go back for regular testing? Do you... What is this? If you, if if, you develop it? Or? If, you've, if you have developed it and you're now being, being quarantined. If so you there is a protocol that the NICD has put in place um, with a flow diagram on, on how the healthcare providers um, will be treating you. And though, uh, if you, you do have COVID, um, your healthcare provider will follow that protocol. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and I think the nice example we had was the cases in Nigeria um, where what they did was to, to put people that were positive in quarantine, trace the contacts, and they did serial um, testing, PCR testing for the virus uh, in order to decide when they are not shedding the virus anymore and when they are not infectious. And they found that after about 13 days, uh, the test came back negative, mm -hmm. which actually tells us that the 14 days of quarantine if you are positive and tested positive for COVID, is more than enough mm -hmm. to self-quarantine as well. Okay. Oh, she's manageable. So, um, Geraldine weighing in with this um, comment or question, if we can bring that back up again. I'm um, speaking you. about the abundance of information uh, <laughs> around, you know, the prevention methods, but um, what we can do to better prepare ourselves for recovery. What can we do? Does it, is there something we can do? I think at the moment it's just making sure that you are staying healthy, so getting enough exercise if you are healthy enough to do so, um, taking your multivitamins, taking your necessary precautions, um, so staying in the best possible um, state of health that you can at the moment. Mm -hmm. Let's take another question that came in from Chantal Kirsten, who says, how can we be expected to get tested if we have flu symptoms and they're charging 1,400 Rand to do the test? People don't have that kind of money. If this is so serious, then why are these tests not free? A well, very, very valid question. Well, I, I think it's an important question. And it depends on where you actually go for your test. If you, if you uh, go through the COVID um, hotline, for instance, I mean, they will either send people to come and do the test on you or will arrange to do the test at a different venue, um, which means that, that it's for free. Mm -hmm. And if people are requesting the test just because they want to know, obviously you will have to pay. Um, and, and, and what the WHO and the uh, Department of Health in South Africa has done they actually have all the different um, laboratories, whether it's 
path care, empath, whatever, mm -hmm. um, available in order to provide people with testing that we don't run into trouble because we are using the National Health Lab only to provide uh, testing. Mm -hmm. So if the, the request is valid and there's a high risk of the person uh, being positive, um, you don't have to go through the private that sector channel, in order yeah. to do it. So okay. not everybody that have a test needs to pay for it. Yeah. A couple of very important numbers for you to maybe jot down and um, have handy with you as you can see it on the screen right now. 0800 that is an emergency hotline over there. There's also a coronavirus support group WhatsApp line that you can jot down. 060-012-3456. And there is also a website, www.sacoronavirus.co.za. That is an information portal for you to... Uh, have all of your questions answered um, and the right channel to, to follow if you need to be tested if you feel that you have been in within that high risk space or come into contact with someone who uh, presents a risk um, that will avoid obviously paying the 1,400 yeah. rand um, that was stated. But we're going to get into more um, uh, regarding travel and preventative matters. matters. We are talking COVID-19. We are talking the coronavirus with our expert panel. We'll continue in a moment. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's a Tuesday morning, and of course, on Tuesday mornings, we speak all things health. And of course, with a particular focus on the coronavirus and COVID-19 this morning, Dr. Emil Reed and Dr. Leila Biku join us to discuss some very, very important uh, notes to, to keep in mind. We've shared some very important lines, uh, which we'll continue to do so. And of course, we'll coronavirus.coza, that website that you need to keep in mind if you're looking for any um, information. Uh, for, for any questions you might have. Uh, and it's a great place to start because there are dedicated professionals on the line that can kind of guide you through that process that might allay your fears. Because I think that's the big thing here is we are fighting our fear. Even as we've been talking about this, I can feel my breath shortening and my brow sweating. <laughs> and that's just the, the nature of, of, that's human nature. So we don't yes. want to spread fear, but we, we need to speak with the right tone to make sure that we have action. Our president said that the relevant important measures are being put in place in, in accordance with the WHO and other various international bodies. As professionals working in this space, are we doing it right? Are the right measures in place? Is there anything you would change? You know? there, there is no doubt that the measures are in place. And I think we have learned a lot from the experiences of China, experiences in the UK, USA, and there's no way we should underestimate this virus. So the measures that have been put in place by our president, well done. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Uh, the question that I did ask you earlier on, Emil, was the timing. Because a lot of people in the days preceding to the president's address were criticizing him on the fact that there was not enough communication, perhaps too much silence. Uh, in the space of, of government in addressing what measures we would take. Yes. Uh, in your experience, was this the right kind of approach? I'm not sure if I'm putting you on the spot I, answering that question. You are allowed to I, say. I actually <laughs> believe it was exactly the correct way of doing things. Yeah. I think the important thing was, if you come out and you speak about it, that it must be evidence-based, it must be factual, and it must be the truth. And, and the important thing, that is the reason why our president discussed it with his advisory board, with people involved with research, with, with various experts before addressing the nation. Yeah. So it was definitely worth the wait. Um, and I think the timing was impeccable. And, and he's put himself at the, the head of that task team as exactly. well, which he hasn't palmed that off to a, um, exactly. one of his ministers. He's, yeah. he's actually staying front and center. Travel, travel, travel. Uh, it's affected all of us. I've already had a couple of engagements um, cancelled. The SAFTAs have been cancelled. Yeah. Yes. Um, but you know, I've got a baby coming, family wanting to come out from the UK. Mm. That's been put off, cancelled. How long are we likely to see these travel restrictions stay in place? And how, from, from your understanding of the situation, maybe your, even your intuition in this space, how long should we avoid travelling locally and abroad? At the moment, I think we should wait until the caseload starts decreasing and then make a decision on that. Um, I think it's quite premature at this stage just to just give a um, you know an answer on it's that. Not this of this a case virus study, is yeah. ever evolving, so we don't know what the numbers are going to to look like. Yeah. We need to at least just give it time, and I think 
maybe postpone things um, for the year and see how things go. Yeah. And, We've I, got, yeah, go and, I, and, and I believe I agree 100% with Leila that um, we, we should take it one day at a time. And, and we are actually only starting off with this uh, epidemic at this moment in time in South Africa. And, and that one should not forecast anything. But what we can say, if we contain it now and we all stand in solidarity with regards to the message that we are spreading all over the country, it should actually be sooner rather than later that we can continue what we've been doing all the time. So the better we, we work together, I cannot say take hands, but stand in solidarity <laughs> the better it is for everybody. Do the presidential dab. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Let's look at some of the comments that have come through on social media um, on Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. Letitia uh, David says, Morning, I had pneumonia four years ago. Am I highest risk for coronavirus as a result? The answer is no. Because if that pneumonia was a pneumonia in a healthy individual, normally after about four weeks uh, after treating the pneumonia, you, you are fully uh, recovered. Um, but if there was a specific reason or an underlying lung disease or a chronic lung disease or a chronic immunological problem, obviously the risk is then much higher. But having an isolated pneumonia four years ago you are not at high at risk high to get COVID-19. All right, another comment that came through in a question on our social media pages, Express the Morning Show, SABC3, from Bev Stephen. Uh, is it wise to <laughs> greet someone by touching elbows when we're being advised to cough <laughs> or sneeze, sneeze into, into our, into our elbows? elbows? Hey, Bev, you, you saw it. You, you went right into it. Well done on that question. I mean, uh, what I would maybe suggest is, can you scratch your face with your elbow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not a challenge. I'm sure it's that's not a, a hashtag that's hashtag challenge. social media challenge right there. <laughs> not yeah. a hashtag challenge. Please don't yeah. try it if you, if you can. Um, but I guess the, the answer then is it, it is safe to do so because it, it's about that contact with your face. That's why we're being advised mm -hmm. uh, to not touch our eyes, our noses, and our mouths. Or and our I've realised, as I've spoken hands. to you, I've probably touched my face about 10 it's times. Really it's part of my, my nature. I didn't realise yes. I did it so much. In, in that same vein, wearing gloves, is it actually protecting you? Because the gloves surely can transfer just as easily as your, no, your skin. No, oh, you're, you, you're touching your face with your gloves on. It's exactly the same as touching your hands yeah. on a surface and then touching So unless if you're exactly. using those gloves for a particular task, touching yeah. surfaces, then disposing of them correct. immediately, exactly. you can't wear a set of gloves no. for an entire day okay. no, and no, expect no. for there not yeah. to be any and, potential and, and, and the same holds true for, for wearing a mask. I mean, certain masks last an hour, certain masks can last uh, 11 hours, um, and as soon as you cough into it, you need to take it off, and, and then there's this specific technique for you to take it off as well because you cannot touch the inside of the mask when taking it off. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to discard it and wash your hands immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that is why we are not advising everybody to walk around with a mask outside. Yeah, all right. We got another comment coming through on social media. I think this is from Melanie Ann Stanley who says, Morning fam, hey, what happens to the baby if a pregnant mother contracts the virus? That is a, a very difficult question, and that is a question that, that we've been struggling with. Uh, and the simple answer is we don't know at this point in time. Because I've, I've heard of a case in the UK where it has been transferred yes. to the baby, but again, you don't know the full circumstances no, of no. why and how. So, so at this point, um, the studies are ongoing with regards to pregnant women, uh, uh, kids, as we discussed earlier, and then uh, people um, living with HIV, mm -hmm. especially in South Africa. So the current answer is we don't know. Yeah. Um, earlier on, I was speaking to one of my colleagues on set about um, having your body healthy in terms of your immune system being strong and that being uh, almost like an immediate barrier of prevention from contracting the virus and developing COVID-19. Mm -hmm. How true is that? If your immune system is strong, are you automatically okay? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, we have put you on the spot about this morning, but we need to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, it does protect you. If you stay nice and healthy, if you are making sure that you are in, like I said, your best possible healthy state, mm. it is going to protect you. Yeah.
Yeah. So the, make sure that you're staying healthy, you're, going to, you're getting your exercise in, you are eating healthily, you are moving your body. So yeah. make, you know, make sure that you take time out every day to, to exercise and get your vitamins in. Yeah. Absolutely. Do what you should be doing every day, exactly. normally. Exactly. Um, it is the new normal, and that's what we've been trying to, to understand and come to terms with. Um, thank you so much. Um, you guys have been absolutely amazing this morning. Thank you for bringing a wealth of information. Yeah. I certainly feel a lot better. Um, <laughs> and hopefully you at home have had some vital questions answered. But the most important thing to know is that there are helplines, there are resources for information. Don't panic phone, speak to someone, the number to uh, dial, uh, the WhatsApp line that you can use, 060-012-3456, or you can go sacoronavirus.co.za as a starting point. Speak to a health professional. If you've come into contact with someone that you know has contracted the virus, then you do need to be tested. Um, but at the moment, it looks like the best bet is to stay healthy and to self-isolate to as much as possible. But um, it's going to be a lonely year, but we can get through it. Exactly.